What's up YouTube, it's your boy Khaled. All right, today we're gonna keep it short and sweet. Actually, we're gonna be talking about how to short trades. All right, so basically betting against the company, you know, you think it's gonna go down and you wanna make money on that, that's shorting. All right, that's kind of like when the market is bearish or uh, when you feel bearish, when you think something's gonna go down, which I love. That's why my name is Bearish Bully. All right, most of the time, whenever I'm making money, it's because I'm actually shorting companies. Not because I think they're horrible or I don't find value in them. Sometimes that is the case. Actually, a lot of times that is the case. But sometimes I short companies that I'm actually long on that I really do like. Tesla, Apple, for example, EDB stocks, like easy to borrow stocks. So we're gonna jump in. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, what it really means. Uh, Cause I do know that there are some people who still have trouble understanding what it really means to short. So let's get into that. So I'm pulling up here CCIV. Now, CCIV, first of all, I'm using Thinkorswim by TD Ameritrade. Now, the reason why I'm pulling up CCIV is to actually show you the difference between something that is ETB, easy to borrow, versus something that's not, all right? So now CCIV is not easy to borrow, meaning that Thinkorswim does not have enough shares to loan to retail investors like myself or to for me to borrow. And then this way I'd be able to hold it until it goes down and buy it back later. So it is not easy to borrow, meaning I can't short it. Now, the way that you can actually figure this out on your own is simply by placing an order. So if you're going to buy a stock, obviously you would just go through this column right here. Uh, this is the active trader tab and you can just click and you can buy a stock. All right. Everything comes up here. It shows you what, what's available. If you want to short the stock, you go to the sell option or you go to the sell size or the ask, All right? You click on it and it'll tell you right away if it is available or not. So this one is not available. All right. It comes up as illegal, meaning you cannot short this company. It's just that TD does not have enough shares to loan out for this stock. So if I'm gonna go to something like Apple, which I do love Apple, uh, but I do make money shorting them and I do make money going long on them. So if I wanted to short this one, same way, if I wanted to buy it, I could buy it. If I wanted to short it, I would just go to the ask or the sell and I'd put in my order. And right away you can see that it is available. All right, so this is okay to borrow from TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim. All right, so they have enough shares to borrow. And when I say that, what I mean is that they have a set amount of shares of every company. If there's a lot of people trying to short Apple, then there may be some times where you try to go and you put in a sell order or a short order, and it'll come back with a message displaying saying that it is not available to borrow. All right, now the reason that you would want to short this is if you find it to be oversold or overbought. All right, now if it's overbought, that means you know what, a lot of people are buying it, it's a perfect time to short it because it should have a correction. All right, so if we zoom in here on a one year daily chart, you'll see here that in this area, it, it came over the 70. So it was slightly oversold, or I'm sorry, it was slightly overbought, so it's due for a correction, and it did. So during this whole drop right here, or if you can see it up here from 138, down to 127 during that fall you would capitalize by shorting it so if i wanted to go ahead and put in a short order from 138 and then i go ahead and wait until it finally reaches this level of uh, support at 127.04 i could buy it at 127.04 and i close out my position so from there from that 135 or 138 all the way down to 127 or 126, I would make money on that, all right? So for another example, just to make it a little easier with solid numbers, if something is at $100 and I feel that it's overbought, I can go ahead and borrow it, wait until it goes down to say $50, buy it at $50 and close out my position. And that $50 difference, that's what I would keep. And the bank or the brokerage gets their shares back because you just bought the shares back. All right, it's really that simple. It's just like when you're buying a stock, you're waiting for it to go higher and higher and higher and then you finally sell it. So now somebody else bought it from you. All right, so you got rid of it. It's the same concept, just in reverse. All right, so that's really all it is for shorting a, a stock. 
there are some stocks that are going to be hard to borrow there's going to be some stocks that are easy to borrow there's going to be some stocks that are just illegal to to short but it also depends on the brokerage that you're using i know thinkorswim does not have too many stocks that are available to borrow or easy to borrow but brokerages like interactive brokers or um, cobra those are actually very good trading platforms for shorting stocks. So what's up guys? All right, I was just going back over the video and I saw that there was a few things that I left out. But I see one thing, probably the most important thing, which is the downside risk or just the risk when it comes to shorting stocks. So obviously if you put your money, let's just say you buy a stock for a hundred bucks and now it's running up and it's great. If it goes all the way down, the most you're going to lose is a hundred bucks, right? So if you're betting against the stock, so let's just say you bought it at a hundred dollars or you're borrowing it at a hundred dollars and you're expecting it to go down. If it doesn't go down and it just keeps on climbing higher, not only can you lose that $100 that you bought the stock for, but you could potentially lose everything that's in your account. So when you're shorting a company and it just continues to climb, remember that you're borrowing the stock from the broker. All right, now when you're borrowing it at the price point that you paid for it, say $100, and you got 100 shares. All right, so that means you invested $10,000. Now, if you have $10,000 invested in it, but you've got, say, $20,000 in your trading account, you're basically allowing that stock to climb up as high as it can go, and that could potentially wipe out your position for that $10,000, plus it can eat into your $20,000 that you have in your total account. So that's what's called, when that happens, that's what's called a margin call, all right? So you're basically using margin against your account to short a stock. So margin meaning you have the $10,000 in the position, so instead of it just going down to zero, it'll go down to zero, but then if it keeps on climbing, you're gonna be losing your initial investment, plus you're eating away at what you have as your backup or just the rest of your account. So always keep that in mind. Uh, you know, when you are shorting something, it is dangerous. You have to make sure that you have your your stops set in place. Or, of course, you can use mental stops. But either way, just make sure that you are extra cautious because shorting companies is not as easy as just going long in a company and it falls. If you're shorting a company and it grows, if it grows really big, it's... It's not something you're going to be able to just walk away from. All right, so just keep that in mind. I'm not trying to say that shorting is bad. It's not bad. It's just always want to make sure that you have your safety measures in place. All right, now back to the video. All right, so hopefully that was uh, short enough, uh, easy for you to understand. If not, then I can try to make another video uh, or message me and I, I can try to give you a better description uh, of how it works or what it means. Uh, and yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll take it from there. All right, hope you all have been having a green week. Now, just uh, to keep in mind, today is the 13th. So on the uh, 15th, Monday, it is a holiday, both in America and in Canada. So there is gonna be no trading. Uh, Everything is going to be shut down, TSX, NASDAQ, uh, NYSE. So everybody's going to be taking a long weekend. I know it's hard. It hurts. Like, I'm jonesing. But either way, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay green, and I'll see you guys in the next one.